Welcome to this uh, catch-up. Uh, we're live at V Forum, and I've got a, a very special guest here today. So, if you'd like to introduce yourself, Hi. special guest. Sure. <laughs> uh, my name is Nick Marshall. I work for VMware Professional Services here in Sydney, and um, I'm, I guess, probably more well known in the community space than I am for being at VMware. I'm very involved in um, things like Auto Lab and the V Brown bags and on the VMTN forums mm. and that kind of stuff. Mm. Cool. Thanks, Nick. Look. Uh, I've got about five or six questions that I'm going to ask Nick. I've been asking the same questions to a few people now, and um, I'll start off by saying, you know, like, um, tell me about your V Forum experiences, past and present, and, and why are you attending V Forum this year? What, what do you hope to get out of I'll, it? I'll start with this year, and then I'll work back. Okay, from yeah, there. yeah, yeah. So yeah. this year, obviously, I'm an employee, a new employee, I've only yeah. been at VMware yeah. for about four months, yeah. and I'm here. I'm, I'm manning the, the so you, expert booth. So you're doing the booth, yeah. I'm cool. doing a booth. Excellent. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm not speaking this time. Mm. Uh, I didn't mm. join the company soon enough to get asked okay, to speak. Yeah. That, right, okay. These things get lined up quite yeah, a bit right, in yeah. advance. Yeah. So I'll, unfortunately, I wasn't given that opportunity, but mm. hopefully next year. Mm. Hopefully next year. Oh, sure, yeah. Um, but yeah, so this afternoon between 3 and 6, I've got the, the, the later shift today. And okay. if anybody, any customers or whatever have any questions, mm. they can come down and ask us. And You're the man. If, if we don't have the, the questions, we've got the resources to get. And if we don't have the answers to their questions, we've got the resources to find the answers. Cool. But hopefully we know the answers. Yeah. Are you, are you attending any sessions or did you go to the keynote or anything like that? So I was or? at the keynote yesterday, this morning yeah. had a little bit of work on. Yeah, sure, as we do, yeah. yeah. Uh, we're we're yeah. all working here. Um, yeah. I've got customers that are ringing me up and wanting to talk and that kind yeah. of stuff. So I'm, I'm involved yeah. in, in that sense as well. I've got um, the VCDX boot camp today that I very much want to, want yeah, to talk. Yeah. Hopefully I don't yeah. get too many customer interruptions, but yeah. obviously the customers come first. So yeah, I think that's we're, a, we're all doing it for them. So. I think that's a good one, yeah. yeah. We were talking before with... Because Michael Webster is going to be in it, so it'll be quite yep. interesting. Yep. Yeah, Mike was, yeah, um, yeah, Mike was hosting. So, yeah. yeah, that's what I'm planning on attending. Mm. That's this year. So, last year I was a customer. Mm -hmm. I, I, I actually could only attend the keynote last year, just the, the day one keynote, because yeah, yeah. I didn't have time available in my shift. Mm. And before that, I hadn't... I haven't actually done any V-Forms in Sydney. Now, about six years ago, there was a similar thing in Melbourne. Okay, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah, know yeah. if it was an official V-Forum. Yeah, that's right, yeah. They used to do it. It's, it's part of the VSS tour that yeah, they do regionally, but for a while it was like V-Forums in different yeah, states. Yeah, so, so I did yeah. that in Melbourne. Uh, yeah, a few years five back. Five years yeah. ago, six yeah. years ago, which okay. is actually kind of the catalyst that got me into virtualization oh, yeah. and that kind of yeah. stuff. It was after that that I... We were just starting to play with it at work, mm -hmm. and I decided oh, I might go and do the certification. I was yeah, into yeah. the Microsoft stack at the time, and yep. I decided yeah. to kind of take a tangent off Microsoft, and here I am today. <laughs> and now look at you. Yeah, look at you go. <laughs> That's great, mate. That's great. Look, um, uh, next question was just around VMworld. I, I, I got the chance to go for the first time this year. Same, same. And yeah, you know, like um, it was, it was a, a pretty special experience. What? What um, you know, if there was a single piece of like a single announcement or a single piece of tech that was uh, talked about, what, you know, what what really stood out for you? What was something that you took away and thought, yeah, this is I'm really passionate about this. Let's go somewhere with this. Sort it of wasn't at VMworld that I actually grasped what they were doing, mm. but um, VXLAN yep. yeah, okay, is, yeah. is, yeah, is yeah. something that I've now had personal experience with. Mm -hmm. I'm really happy that the industry is getting behind this, this converged way of doing yeah, things yeah. rather than it just being a particular VMware technology. Mm. Like the, the previous iteration, which was uh, BCD and I, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and BCD back networks were okay, but it, yeah, was, yeah, yeah. it was Mac and Mac encapsulation it, Mac instead and of Mac and UDP. That's right. Yeah, yeah. The industry wasn't behind it, but now yeah, it's yeah. this kind of open standard that people are getting yeah. behind. Yeah. So. Now that I understand the ramifications of that, yeah, that's yeah. what I'm, what I'm yeah. really happy that is in this version of the networking security yeah. for um, VCD. So that's the vCloud networking security. I think that's been a good idea, them bundling it all into one product. Or, or I guess there's still parts of it separated out with the endpoint going into ESXi yeah, and like, it's, it's a good idea. With the whole suite thing at the moment, it's kind of like the first iteration. So mm. VMware's really concentrating hard on getting the user interfaces all the same across yeah, their products. Yeah, because yeah. they've bought so many companies and purchased these great products yeah, and yeah, trying to yeah. fit them all together from a technology perspective, the user experience is different mm. because different yeah. people have designed the UI. Mm. But now mm. VMware's really trying to get that 
single pane of glass, everybody take a drink. Yeah. <laughs> you know that drink again. Pain. And, oh, pain. Oh. And, and, and it's uh, it's really starting to come together. So Big Cloud Director looks mm-hmm. like VCI, yeah, which yeah. is the yeah. new VCI web client, mm-hmm. and VC Ops is starting to look that way as yeah. well. Yeah. So they, they are starting to, to tie together. But in terms of your question, they're excellent. Cool, that's good. That's really good, yeah. And look, um, I understand that you've been intending the, the Sydney VMO. Yes, yes. Um, tell me about your commitment to supporting the, the, the VMware user group and the whole community. I mean, you know, you've mentioned the brown bag, the, the auto lab stuff. You're a big participant in the computer Communities. community. What, what does it mean to you personally, yeah? I guess I started getting really actively involved in the community uh, a bit over 12 months ago. Mm. And it was actually... It was really selfish of me at, at the time. Right? It was. Yeah. I, I, I was um, in a job that I wasn't liking the future of, mm-hmm. uh, so I decided to kind of weigh my options up. Where do I want to go in my career? And I decided I want to go and work at VMware. And that was around September last year, just okay. after VMworld last year. So what I did was I jumped on VMware's forums. Mm-hmm. I found out about VMUGs and started going along yeah, to those. Yeah. I got actively involved in uh, the V Brown Bag podcast. Well, mm-hmm. I turned it into a podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just kind of an online thing that was great, but there, it wasn't this pool of resources that people could just pull at any time. Yeah, yeah. So I actively got involved in all these community things, went along to VMUGs as a way to get contacts within VMware yeah, so yeah. that when an opportunity yeah. came up and when I was ready to make a move, mm-hmm. I could. So it was a very, very selfish thing. However, now, I love the community. It's yeah. done so much for me. So much for me. Mm. I want to give back to the community, mm. which is why I spend three hours a week doing brown bags, why I'm yeah. discussing with yeah. Mark on how we can get the hands-on labs into the Sydney v mm. how mm. we can do all these things, because it's... I guess it's time for me to pay dividends, right? Yeah, the the yeah, community great... invested in me, yeah. the, the the user groups, the the contacts that I made, mm. I, I now owe all of those people that have just had those five, ten minute conversations yeah, yeah. over beers after like yeah. a presentation or whatever, the knowledge that I've gained, the contacts that I've made, it's time to kind of give back. So I'm I'm hoping to speak at your um, the user, user conference, conference. And, and we would love you to be there, Nick. Yeah. So we'll, 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 we'll see what magic can happen yeah. in the background, you know. So, but uh, look, I have to say, Nick, it's it's so refreshing hearing what you said just then, you know, because I think that's what um, that, that's what the VMUG's about. A lot of it is is it's that accessibility into a community. It's a, it's that door into the community sort of thing. So, and it's having those one-on-one relationships. You know, I think Twitter and social media has helped a lot with that. Absolutely. You know, it's made the world accessible on a community level. And I think, you know, like the, the stuff that you've done with the with the brown bags and the, I know I'll keep mentioning it, but it's, it is a good thing. It is, yeah, we, so. We hit, we hit uh, just, just as a little mm, aside. Please do, yeah. Last night, we hit 50,000 episode downloads for the year. Wow. You heard it here first, <laughs> yeah? That's amazing, yeah? That's yeah, amazing, so that's yeah. pretty cool. And this yeah. morning, actually, hang on, in 45 minutes, we have the VCDX boot camp with John Astro live on the podcast for the next wow, three weeks. Yeah, so right. he's VCDX 001. Yeah, yeah, he's the man, he's, yeah. He, I'm at the VMworld, yeah. He's presenting his yeah. boot camp, yeah. just like he's going to be here at V4. Yeah. He's doing a recording version of it and a live version yeah. for us on the podcast. Because um, you had Stephen Harrod, didn't you? On, Last week. On the, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's really cool, yeah. That so is, yeah. Uh, things happening, and it's thanks to the community that, yeah, that yeah. all this thing perpetuates. We, we have such reach within within VMware mm. because of the momentum that the community yeah, has behind yeah, it. Just yeah. like the, the VMTM subscription stuff. That's all yep. community-driven. Yep. That's great stuff, yeah. Okay, so look, um, I've been asking everybody this question, yeah. What's your opinion on the software-defined data center, yeah? How does it compare it's, to cloud, it's the, yeah? It's the, it's the new buzzword, <laughs> How do, Yeah. How does it compare to cloud? And it look, like, um, it, VMware's really changed that ecosystem. They, they've, they've, they've gone into the compute world. They've gone and consumed compute. Everyone runs VMware for compute. And now they're looking at the storage and the network inside. You know, what, what's your take on it? You know, what, what do you... Well, I'm on the inside now, so I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, I drink the Kool-Aid for breakfast. Yeah, if you've got, you got the script, you're going to bring the script down and no, no, say... 
So I'll repeat a couple of things. That Steve Herrera, it's, it's his vision. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I've heard it a couple of times mm, now at mm. internal meetings and last week on the podcast, uh, the V Bound Bank podcast, mm. and then again yesterday within the within the keynote here. At yeah, yeah, yeah. The way that he describes it is. Vsphere is to virtualization what uh, now, now I've got to get this right. It's alright. It's Vsphere is to virtualization as the software defined data no, as VCloud is to the software defined data set. So it's a it's a, a framework. Mm. It's 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 a it's an architectural it's a way of building cloud. Mm-hmm. Right? So you can build cloud without certain components and it's still a cloud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Mm. But if you're not automating everything, you're missing out. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you still require those manual interventions. Mm. So it's it's about abstracting everything mm. and automating that abstraction mm. so that you can do capacity management instead of break Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the way that I see it. Mm-hmm. It... Um, it makes sense to me. Mm. It didn't make sense to me to begin with. <laughs> so go and watch the keynote again. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of like um, you know like I've been saying a lot. Like you know, software defined data center is kind of like what it's it's like the cloud for IT pros kind of thing. You know, because for me I've always like look, it's fair enough with cloud. I understand the concepts of it and stuff. But for me it's just it's just a bit too vague. It's a bit too general. It's Whereas, too fluffy. Yeah, yeah. I, didn't, I was trying <laughs> to avoid that. I was trying to avoid that one. You know, but uh, you know it's a bit too generalist. And, and like I think you know for me like. Listening to the words around software-defined data center, networking, storage, compute—you know those sort of things—like it kind of adds more substance to it. Well, you know, it, it actually says what it is. Cloud mm. could be anything, yeah, right? Yeah, you know, and, right. and it is anything. It's yeah. the, what the web. The, you can say the web is the cloud. Yeah, yeah. Or, or the, sky, <laughs> or the clouds are pooled resources, mm. and whether they're automated or not. Mm. Whereas the software-defined data center is effectively. A data center, all the things you would find in a data center, compute, memory, mm. network, storage, all of these things yeah. defined in software, abstracted. Mm. So it's much more, uh, the, 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 the name is the definition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that's good. That's really good, yeah. Whereas clown it is, no, we Well, you know, it's just been a bit, I, th- I, I feel the term's been abused a bit because everyone's just slapped cloud on a lot Do of things. Do you think that that's what's going to happen with software defined data center, though? They're going to say, this is software defined when really. It's just another buzzword they want yeah, to but it's you know it's already been acronymed. You know what I mean? So it's already been like you know like there's more to it. I still think there's more substance more to it. Okay. But like I say, it's, it's cloud for IT pros. That's what I, that's what I think. Yeah. Because everybody's jumping on the bandwagon. <laughs> oh okay, yeah, sure. Quicker you know, than like, they did for cloud. There were yeah, so many yeah. naysayers with cloud, but everybody's kind of adopted this software defined mm. term. <laughs> yeah, cool. That's good. Look, next question. Um, Tell us about your home lab, mate, yeah? Home lab. Do you get your hands on the tools? Absolutely. So last night <laughs> I was up until 3.30 because I'm studying for my VCAP yeah. 5 DCA. DCA, yeah. yeah, yeah. next week. And I've only just started studying. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Uh, since mm. I'm with customers all the time, yep. I have to stay sharp. Mm. Uh, I do both design and implementation. So that's, in my opinion, the perfect... Mm-hmm. Perfect world because yeah, yeah. I get to do that, Both sides of it. that, yeah. that kind of visio conceptual stuff, working out what the, what the customer needs, their requirements, mm-hmm. and then drawing it up so it looks all pretty. And then I get to yeah. the other fun side of things. <laughs> of, okay, let's take this pretty diagram and let's actually yeah, build yeah. it and use it and show them how it works. And make sure it works. <laughs> make sure it works. So, yeah, yeah. yes, lab is very important. Mm. Um, I have a fairly modest lab compared to some. So Jason Bocky and Michael Webster being kind of the, <laughs> yeah. the, the upper No storage line. arrays in the yeah. in the basement or anything like that. Then, no, yeah. Not yet, not yet. <laughs> yet. So I've, I've actually got two labs. Mm. One is kind of version one. The other is version two. It's not complete yet. Mm. One, that's in the garage. So yeah, version yeah. one is I have a couple of little HP microservers that are very, very popular within okay, the community. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're relatively cheap. They are, yeah. yeah. Undocumented, but you can load them up with 16 gig of RAM mm. if you get the right modules. Mm-hmm. And... I have a QNAP 4 bay NAS. And that's okay. kind of it. Yeah, so I've yeah. got two servers, I run nested ESX on that, and all of my storage is via iSCSI, and that's kind of my lab. Mm-hmm. While I'm at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's going to evolve because I've got some actual rack servers in the garage and I've got some switches and stuff. Because okay, yeah, I want to do I want to get more into the I guess the, the physical side of things mm-hmm. from a networking perspective and 
either like a fiber channel. So if anybody's we all would, yeah, we all would, yeah. Just that little thing about the power, but hey, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of version one. Version mm. two is, of course, the Auto Lab, which Alistair yep. 90% developed, and I mm. kind of helped with a bit of dev and QA and that mm. kind of mm. stuff, and that I'm posting on one of the site's uh, lab guides. And that's for when I'm on customer sites, mm -hmm. um, on the road, traveling, that kind of stuff. It only requires a laptop with 8 gig of RAM. SSD certainly helps. Mm -hmm. I actually put an order in the other day to upgrade to 16 gig because I want to do things like VCloud and View yeah, and that yeah. kind of stuff. There's a lot of products now, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the great thing about Autolab is yeah. I can pull it down and build it up within, mm -hmm. I can get a fully nested lab from nothing within about an hour. So that's... That's a pretty good sales that, pitch, mate, that that's, is, yeah. That's vCenter, two, two hosts, distributed switching, iSCSI storage, a cluster set up, mm -hmm. and the VMA installed yep, yep. in about an hour. And most of that time is waiting for Windows to install. <laughs> wow, that's pretty cool, man. Yeah, yeah, that's so pretty cool, yeah. Uh, credit to, to Alistair Cook. Mm. Uh, he did with the majority of the work. Mm. Uh, I'm kind of writing riding the momentum wave a little bit and yeah. help, helped him helped him with getting it out there but uh, we call it riding the coattails yeah, yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. The coat tails. <laughs> um, yeah. but it, it's invaluable mm. I, I was mm. in uh, Thailand last week and I VMware has some internal labs to do mm. proof of concepts to make sure what, what you what the customer wants to do and what you're thinking that would help them you can do a POC internally yeah, and make sure it's yeah. going to work I didn't have internet access, so I couldn't yeah, get right. to, to their lab. Yeah. And I didn't have time to build a traditional, mm. I'm, I'm on site for two weeks, so I don't want to spend mm. no, half no, a week. No, you don't want to be chewing all that <laughs> time just getting it together. Yeah, yeah. So I, I very, very quickly mm. built up an auto lab instance on my laptop, mm -hmm. tested everything out, it looked good. Mm. So we made a, a couple of minor tweaks to the design because it didn't quite work the way they expected it to mm. and then we implemented it from there. So, so I believe it's that's a big point around the software defined data center as well as that is that you're not tied to the hardware no. so it means that everybody can have a home lab now all you oh, need okay. is is like a single server a bit of disk a bit of a good bit of memory and, and like anyone can do it but then you again know? 8 gig is not that much these days. No it's not so you're right. So as an yeah. example mm. I've got, I run a 15 inch MacBook Pro as my, my mm primary workhorse computer, especially when I'm on the road. It's a little heavy, but mm. the maximum amount of RAM is 16 gig. Yeah, it yeah. only came with eight. I put an order in the other day from some online retailer, and it cost me $97. Wow, now, that's pretty good, bucks, isn't it? And that's for 16 gig. That's not an upgrade yeah, from eight yeah, to 16. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the six, whole 16. That's two eight, yeah. gig, eight gig sodiums. That's so you moved from the, two, two fours to two eights, basically. Yeah, yeah right. And the, okay. the cost to entry. All the software from VMware yeah, and Microsoft yeah. can be trialed. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and when you're building these labs and ripping them down again, it's, mm -hmm. it's so it costs you a laptop and a hundred dollars. The SSD good, yeah. will save you time, definitely. You can't build it in an mm -hmm. hour if you don't have an SSD. But most laptops yeah, yeah. these days are coming with it. Yeah, it's, it's it's everywhere now, isn't it? So, hey, look. So the last question, yeah. Like we, you know, we talked a bit about Autolab. Um, yeah. Can you tell us a bit about what's coming up? You know, can can we get a futures like an NDA sure. session on, on what, what you think is going on okay, and where, so where it's heading? This is not official. It's not. It's stuff that we're trying. Yeah, okay. Nick, nothing's official nothing's on this official. podcast so, or catch up. So. At the moment, what we're trying to do is well, we've got five point one that's mm. been tested. So yep. Grant Orchard, who yep. I think you've spoken to already, mm. uh, did a lot of the scripting work to to upgrade to five point one with single sign on mm -hmm. and the new uh, inventory service. VCenter changed a fair bit. Yeah, yeah. The hypervisor didn't change that much. Storage hasn't changed at all in, in the lab itself. So there was there was a bit of scripting on that, that side of things, and he's done the most most of that work. So we're just testing that, mm -hmm. and that'll that'll be uh, 1.1, and that'll be out very soon, within okay, the next yeah. month. Or so. After that, what we are realizing is some people don't have access to a laptop, or they don't want to run it all the time, or they don't have the space, mm -hmm. or whatever. So one thing that we're doing is we're talking to cloud providers. Mm -hmm. uh, I won't name any, but yeah, we're I know who they to are. Cloud, cloud <laughs> yeah, providers yeah. about trying to give them a copy of the Auto Lab that they can kind of have as a bundle that you can single click install. Here's a copy of the Auto Lab. Do your testing, rip it down, pay, mm -hmm. pay as you go, kind of thing. Wow, and it only yeah. costs you hopefully dollars mm -hmm. for for your hours of study. 
So let's say you can spare two hours a week of study. You, you, you're studying for your BCAT 5 GCA, mm -hmm. like I am at the moment. Yep, yep. So last night I spent four or five hours and I could have just logged into a cloud provider with a hopefully faster disk, mm -hmm. more memory available, oh, yeah, this yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. So it happens even quicker. Bigger part, you yeah. can do all of your, your testing and then you can just walk mm -hmm. away and not have to have the I guess the infrastructure. And I guess, you know, the beauty with Autolab as well is, is that you're not, it doesn't have to sit there idle. You can spin it down. Oh, the resources can be used for something else. That's, that's I need it now. Spin it back up. Here it is ready for you. So at the moment, I run a Mac. I mm. run OS X as my primary OS. Mm. But for work, if I want to, the, the, the Apple Mail application and the Microsoft um, Outlook for Mac yeah, is, yeah. is kind of a bit quirky. Yeah, right. So I run a Windows 7 VM as kind of my primary yeah, yeah, work Yeah, yeah, I know a few VM, people do that. Yeah, but I so. can't run that at the same time as I run my lab. Mm. But I can suspend them pretty yeah, easily. Yeah. Just suspend it to disk and run up the lab. Mm -hmm. It takes minutes to spin up my lab when it's already been yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I think that as more and more people get into virtualization and want to do the certifications and want mm. to do proof of concepts and want to test the new versions, the betas, the... How many people are actually running 5.1 in their office environment? Mm. Not that many at the moment because it's only just been released. Yeah, but yeah. I'm, sure, I'm sure I like to think that there's most of the people here at VForum that either are trying it or would like to try it. Mm. It's not easy to get resources at work. Yeah, yeah. But everybody's yeah, got a laptop. Yeah. Mm, mm. It's only hundred dollars yeah, to yeah. try it out really to get the memory. Yeah, no, that's great. There. So that's where I see it going. Mass proliferation. Everybody <laughs> World have domination. Yeah, yeah, I like that. That's the way to go. Yeah, yeah you have got to think big with these sort of things. You know. Indeed, like, yeah. Indeed. Cool. Look, Nick. Thanks very much for your time today. Pleasure. I really appreciate Pleasure. it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I look forward to another catch up in the future sometime. Yeah. Definitely. When thanks, I'm in, mate. When yeah. I'm in Melbourne at the, the conference yeah. in February. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Thanks, mate. Yeah. Cheers.